Shalom, Mubarakah, Mispaka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, we're going to be exposing the true biblical ox, true biblical cattle. Now, in this picture right here, we see the uh, Auroch who lived all throughout Eurasia. Now, the Auroch is the animal that, you know, the biblical oxen is thought to be bred from. The biblical oxen is thought to be bred from the Auroch. All right. And we know the Aleph, which is the very first letter in Hebrew. Um, the original form looked like this. Right. Then it looked like this. And I don't even know what this is like. That's completely of European origin. But these are the two that originate from us these both are the heads of oxen it said that when adam named the animals the first animal that he seen was the ox because it was so noticeable and plenteous throughout the land and because this was the first animal that adam saw the first letter would be based off of the ox head. And you know, Aleph represents leader, strength, power. And the ox was an extremely strong animal. The, the letter was based off of this animal, the ox. So which one looks more like the biblical ox? The Auroch? Or the... American bison. If we're looking at the Aleph, we have the American bison, then we have the Auroch. This is what they tell you oxen look like in the Bible. How do you know it don't look like this? When we clearly see the language that we use in our language, our ox head does not look like this. It looks like this. So, I'll let you guys be the judge. As you can see, the pictograph Hebrew. Who does it match? Does that look like an Auroch? Does it look like a buffalo? You see the buffalo. One, uh, one thing to notice about the buffalo is also the bottom of his head. He has hairs at the bottom of his chin, right? Which makes his head look more pointy, you know, at the base, which also adds to this Aleph. But when we look at the Eastern Auroch, which they tell you is the biblical ox, he doesn't have anything under his chin that makes this point. Neither are his horns protruding directly upward. Let's look at this beauty for a second. Just take take it in. The beauty of this animal. The beauty of this animal. As you can see, he has woolly hair like a sheep. Right? Like a Negro. And, you know, that's very high vibrational, high energetic hair. Right? If we know anything about frequencies... Wool has a very high frequency. This is wool on this animal. You know, wool and linen are the two highest energetic um, materials that you can wear. That's why you're not allowed to mix them, right? Because it throws off the energy. We have a very high energetic animal right here with very woolly hair like us. No animal on earth, not even the wild sheep, has woolly hair. Except for this guy. The wild sheep has straight straight hair. You have to domesticate a sheep for it to have wool. That's a fact. Look at the wild sheep anywhere. I mean, the, the North American wild sheep, he's kind of got wool. But the wild sheeps in the Middle East, their hair is perfectly straight. You know? But that's because the wild sheep of 
North America used to be domesticated, just like the American buffalo used to be domesticated, right? And I'm gonna show you the American buffalo used to be domesticated. But first, let me point out <laughs> how these horns point out. Do you see that they point directly up? Point directly up, just like the A-Lift. Just like the A-Lift. When, when we see these animals, we don't consider them to be, um, you know, the biblical ox because they look wild. They don't look like a cow. They don't look like something that you would just have in your, on your land. But these are actually very easily tamed. As you can see, this one right here is domesticated. He has a all in his ear, right? So they're very easily tamed because it's in their genetic memory to be domesticated. They have just strayed loose from us when we left our land, when we forsook our Allah, Yahuwah made us forsake our beasts. Our animals either fled away, they were took it from us, they were robbed from us, or they, or we just had to leave them because we couldn't take care of them anymore. A lot of these animals just live in the Holy Land to this day, wild, but it used to be domesticated. We got wild goats, we got wild donkeys, we got wild horses, we got wild oxen, like these guys, all in the Holy Land. Not to mention the wild sheep. There's a lot of evidence of domestication, especially of sheep in America. This, this is Utah. In Utah, you can just walk through the mountains, take a hike, and you'll see stuff like this on the wall. As you can see, you can see a shepherd. The shepherd has buffalo horns on his head because he probably just slaughtered an ox and took his horns and put them on his head as, as you know, a fashion statement. That's what they used to do. This shepherd owns lots of sheep. As you can see, he's not hunting the sheep. They're just around him, near him. This is a sign of domestication. However, there's bandits around him. As you can see, uh, hunters coming, robbing this man of his sheep. They're, they have bow and arrow in hand and they're stealing his sheep. That's why as a shepherd, you gotta be strong to protect your sheep, to, to, to defend it against wild animals as well as thieves uh it's actually a, it was actually a very common thing in ancient times for your sheep to be stolen by other people um it was very very common thing because i mean they didn't have gates back then you had to lead your sheep to green pastures meaning you had to walk for miles to find green land for your sheep to graze and there was no gates where you could just keep your sheep's and be safe all the time. You had to be a shepherd to protect your sheep against people like this. You see? And as you see, he looks strong. He looks at a like a bigger build. He's dealing with these sheep. You have to be strong when you're a shepherd. These are sheep. These are clearly sheep in the picture. The horns will show you that. Male sheep are called rams, by the way, for people who don't know that. And, uh... As you can see, they look very woolly in the picture. You know, they look very woolly in the picture. You see their bodies are thick. Uh, that shows a lot of wool. Uh, so for the people who say American sheep are not woolly, once domesticated, they, they tend to get woolly just like any other sheep around the world. Any, any breed of sheep will get woolly after a few generations of breeding. That's, you can, you can breed almost any animal to be woolly. You can breed anything to be anything, actually. Breeding, you, if you know how breeding works, that's that's really how it is. You can breed an animal to be taller, shorter, uh, a certain color, certain hair texture, certain horn shape. You can breed an animal to be a goblin. Look what they did to the, to the Damascus, Damascus goat. You can breed an animal to be anything. You know what I'm saying? So breeding can, to, can work wonders very quickly, especially with sheep. You know, they lie to us a lot. And... They tell us that there, there were no horses. This picture right here is about a thousand years old. Um, as we can see, there is clearly a man on top of a horse. 
right here um as well as right here and oh and right here he's on a horse shooting a deer but right here we see the ox right but let's what i want you to do is i want you to focus on his head and how they drew his head notice that this animal does not live in the middle east never did it ever live in the middle east so how did we have the ox head in paleo hebrew to look like this i'm just saying Also, we see more evidence of domestication of sheep. You know, we have something upon the sheep's back. Um, you know what I'm saying? It shows that he's probably carrying something, some type of load. We can see uh, another ox right here, you know. a lot going on in this picture beautiful oh yeah i also want to talk about this wheel they'll say that the wheel they didn't have that they said that native americans never discovered the wheel but it's clearly on this rock art in utah of a wheel a cherry wheel at that so you know that's something that's something to look at you know think about as we can see i don't really uh this is a man i don't know if this is a donkey or a sheep just his body the way his body built and neck how his neck is bent down and stuff it, look, it makes me think of a donkey but it very well could be a sheep uh and we see you know another animal right here it looks like that's a sheep right there. I couldn't find much, if any. I don't think I found any art of buffaloes being hunted. I just seen them being drawn, you know, which shows me possibly that they might have had them as domestic domestic beasts. You know what I'm saying? In the daytime, our animals were out to graze, but at night, our animals were put in inside of their barns, inside of their fences or whatever. Uh, and they, they were put in into small little containments at nighttime. If you could afford, a, uh, you know, if you could afford a barn, you had a barn. But if you couldn't, you had a fence. And it was just a small fence to keep them temporarily pinned up. And this appears to be like some form of, you know, the tops, the whites of sapling trees that were cut in half and made into some type of fencing barrier for this ox and um or maybe this ox was violent and he had to be pinned up at all times you know who knows but this definitely does look like some type of ancient barrier set around this beast and that's what i'm 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 really thinking here this is also some to look at clearly there's you know horses being used written upon in 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 these in america because they say spain brought the horses but that's clearly not true spain did not bring the horses if we clearly see a man pulling a horse with a rope and another man on top of the horse but yeah if you see what i'm saying i'm just saying they had domesticated animals this is clearly a horse and this is another ox another buffalo you know what I'm saying? His horns are very exaggerated, or are they? Because uh, prehistoric, the prehistoric buffalo that lived thousands of years, way very far before, before you know the artifacts of which we see the the Aleph, you know, before that even was invented, there is a buffalo that roamed North America that was ex exceedingly huge, with huge horns they believe that this was the buffalo that was placed upon Noah's Ark and you know this could very well be it again it has upward pointing horns that point to the sky not like the Auruk right this could have been the beast that Adam seen and was like wow that's strength 
Therefore, I'm going to name it Aleph. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but as you can see, there, there's clearly a horse. This was found in either Utah or New Mexico. Now, let's get into the scriptures. Here we go. Numbers chapter 19, verse 1. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe and Aharon, saying, This is the ordinance of the Torah, which Yahuwah hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasserol, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. So do you know what this means? First of all, if I were to read the whole chapter to you, you would see that this red heifer would be would need to be obtained because they would sacrifice it, burn it, and the ash, they would place the ash inside of water. And the water will become holy water. And they dip the hyssop in it. And they will place it upon all the furniture. Uh, when somebody died in a tent, for example, they'll place the, they'll dip the hyssop inside the holy water with the ashes of the red heifer. And they will sprinkle it all around inside the tent. And the tent will be clean in seven days. Right? And it's important for us to understand that this was for forgiveness of sins. Because the animal was innocent. Right. This was a young animal, the red heifer, red heifer. Now keep that. It says without spot, wherein is no blemish and upon which never came yoke. That means this animal was never worked. It had no blemish. That means it don't have no cuts, no scratches, nothing, no spots, no bruises, nothing. Now, why does it have to be a red heifer? And first of all, what is a heifer? Now, this is some basic vocabulary that we must understand. An ox is adult cattle. Oxen is plural of an ox. Bullock is a young male ox. A calf is baby cattle. A bull is a male ox, an adult male ox. A cow is a female ox that has boar calves. So she's had babies before, but a heifer is a young female ox that has not yet bore calves. We go back to the scripture, we'll see Yah basically wants a virgin cow, a virgin cow that has not born any children, right? A virgin cow that has not born any children and still should be young without spot, without blemish, and with, had never came yoke. That means it never had anything uh, put upon his neck it's never been worked when the ox is first born they're a little orange is red so that's not what y'all wants yet he wants them to be a little bit older then when they get a little bit older now they're bright red right this is what y'all wants you understand this is a red heifer if it's a female because the males i believe they're born red too but a red heifer just means a very young female ox you know what i'm saying a red heifer means a young heifer that's still in his prime of youth, but at the same time, prime of energy. So not a very little baby, but a little bit older and their fur gets bright red like this. When they start getting older than that, they start becoming yellow. This is too late. Y'all doesn't want it anymore. As you can see, it's probably got spots and blemishes all on it by now. And then when it gets older than that, now he's lost all his yellow and he's brown. And then when he gets older than that, now he's at his regular tone for when he grows up. You know what I'm saying? But a red heifer is just what I said. A young female ox that has not had any children yet and has not been worked. But of course, it's red. It's red. So it's red because of why? Because that's how American buffaloes are. That's how they are. They're, they will be red. You understand? They will be red when they are at a certain age. I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but the scripture looks like it's adding up for the American buffalo. Um, the, the language appears to be adding up for the American buffalo. Um... You know, it's a lot of things that they taught you that's just pure lies. And it's time for us to understand that as people. 
Okay, this is what I want to show you. This is a very amazing painting, wall painting in Utah. It shows what I believe of a king. There's some type of uh, crown here. Um, and here's some people right here. They are definitely dark skinned people, um, you know, with the robes that, that we would assume that they wore in scripture times. And it gets very e extremely uh, just amazing. You see, he has a staff like what they will, you know, a shepherd would have. The white man, I'm sorry to continually say the white man, but that's just what it, what it is. This, that's, what the, that's what it is. It's true. The white man went over and just started destroying evidence. So he put, he took guns and literally started shooting into the wall. You see the bullet, bullets all right here, bullet holes all right here. There was a man and his horse. And they it looked like they like threw something and just broke that part because they were trying to get rid of the horse. They want you to believe that horses never originated in America. They don't want you to think, you know, the horse is an American animal, but it is. And there's so many pictures of horses all around Western North America. And they, and they continue to lie to you from, from childhood. Horses come from Europe. Yeah, they're European. Just like they do everything, you know? At the end of the day, they're going to tell you everything comes from Europe because they come from Europe, so they want to feel special, you know. But that's clearly a horse, and this, this painting is 2,000 years old. So I just want somebody to explain to me how did this, how did this happen? What is this going on? Why is this so beautiful? Why does it look like, you know, an actual conversation of two black men, two black shepherds? Why are they shooting in the wall right here? You know what I'm saying? What's the point of the what's the point of the gunshots? Now this this right here, I know I'm off topic completely. But this this right here, guys, this is also in Utah, right? And it's 2000 years old at, at at least. It's probably older. It's a painting, so you know, it's probably of like some type of blood or whatever they use to paint this. Uh, I don't think blood because that would washed off, but they had some type of dye or something that they used to paint this stuff. I'm, I mean, there's clearly, guys, there's clearly a king with a crown on his head with locks. With locks! Dreadlocks! Dreadlocks. A king with dreadlocks, and this is the back of his head. You know what I'm saying? So, there's some, some stuff that we need to know about. And... These people next to him, I wouldn't be surprised if these are his wives. Because just look at the way they're, they're these look like um, dresses, a head veil of some sort, something to cover the head with, you know, a dress down to the foot. This is like some king with locks and he has like wives all around him. Some type, some women, you know, all around him. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what that is. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying there's some, some some things that we need to look over again with history. And I just hope that these type of videos that I make, I hope they get out there to people because it's something, it's something here that they're hiding from us. Definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. DeSoto also mentioned how the Florida Indians made great use of mountain bison, which he called cows, for meat and clothing. DeSoto's soldiers shot and killed as many of these mountain bison as they could for two primary reasons. One, to feed himself and his crew, and two, so the Florida Aboriginals themselves wouldn't have any food to eat. Deuteronomy 28 and 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. These curses has played out all the way into the end of the 17th century, when over 80 million mountain bison 
and American buffalo were completely wiped clean to cut off Indian food supply. Today, less than a hundred free roaming buffalo remain, while there at one point were more buffalo and bison in North America than people.